Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me in another video at Just Gone Viral. In this video we're going to be taking a look at John Wedger and his behaviour of recent months and finding out that John Wedger has not learned anything at all from the Nicola Bully case. And in fact John Wedger has quite a fruitful and flavoured past with regards to rubbing shoulders with some of the most serious criminals in the UK. This video is in no way intended to cause John Wedger any alarm, harassment or distress, but in fact it's just a reaction and reflection of the news articles and information that is readily available out there. Many are familiar with the Nicola Bully case of the woman that lost her life in a river in Lancashire. What a lot of people will be unaware of is the actions and behaviour of John Wedger since the incident with Nicola Bully. In the picturesque landscapes of Lancashire lies a river with a haunting past, a past that intertwines with the tragic loss of Nicola Bully, a young woman whose life was claimed by its unforgiven waters. But amidst the solemn echoes of her memory, a troubling figure emerges, ex-metropolitan police officer and podcaster John Wedger, a man with a disturbing past and a penchant for reckless behaviour. John Wedger's past is surrounded in controversy, mystery and secrets. His past behaviour and recent reckless actions over the past few months, with disregard for safety around water and fast currents recently, has raised eyebrows, particularly in connection to the very river where Nicola Bully lost her life. John set up a group where people were invited to swim in unknown waters in freezing cold temperatures in just their pants. John called this P-A-D-S, Pants Against Depression Swimming. Yet John's actions reflect something more of a danger and lack of lessons learned from water and drowning surrounding Nicola Bully. John is fully aware of what happened to Nicola Bully and has even commented on the status on podcasts previously. But he has irresponsibly put himself at danger while encouraging others to try the same. I am aware that John has suffered with PTSD and was dismissed from the force, but there are many different methods and activities that don't involve putting your life at risk. The flowing water at the bottom, it's not powerful enough, there's not a big enough drop on the other side to stop you. Again, we did search the other side of that weir to make sure there was nothing trapped in it. So I stand up now, it's waist deep. Here I am, John Wedger, pen swimming against depression. We're in the River Ripple, Lancashire, and it's cold, 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 cold River Ripple. Uh, wow, wow, this is cold. Right, pen swimming against depression, Lancashire, River Ripple. Here we go. John Wedger, Pants Women Against Depression. I'm in the River Ripple in Lancashire. This is incredibly fast flowing. Wow, this is flowing so fast. It's very, very cold. Wow, and it's, I'm struggling with the current here. Whoa, that is quick. Um, this is where uh, that nickel bullet went in this river here uh, last year. So um, it's cold. Very, very fast, beautiful, beautiful river flowing down from the Lake District, I think. And uh, so I've had a little swim, but honestly, it is very, very fast. I really struggle with this current. 
This is incredible. Look at it, look how it's flowing. Wow. And if I just go with it, it just look at the speed. I mean, it's going at about eight knots, maybe more. I've just come in a bit. And so it's, wow, that is fast. Let's go under. So John Major, Pantsum against depression, River Ripple, very cold. Even on a sunny day, the sea, canals and rivers can be dangerous, especially after a couple of drinks. If you fall in, you'll suffer from cold water shock. Your breathing increases uncontrollably, meaning you're more likely to take water into your lungs and drown. This is because the average temperature of UK water is a cold 11 degrees. About the same as a pint of beer. Again, all of this was searched on the night in question by officers wading in a line and we could see the whole width of the river. As you get to the weir itself, hopefully you can see there's a lip, but there's a lot of water going over it, even though the water is now down from where it was on the day it comfortably pushed me over floats over the top and straight into the past if we go back to the very beginning to 2019 when the jesus army church which was situated and still stands in the heart of the town center of northamptonshire was shut down amidst allegations of assault and abuse against children John Wesher was an advocate and a member of this church group, or some might say a cult. Along with his friend Chris Lambriano, who is a character with a very dark past himself, with strong links to the craze and is also a well-known member of the Jesus Army Church. Jesus Army Church opened in 1969 in Northampton. It then was closed and shut in 2019. This was due to six men being arrested and charged, then sentenced for assaults on 11 victims between the 1970s and 1990s. Good morning, my lovelies. Right, I'm just going to get back onto this subject of John Wedger, Chris Lambriano, and the Jesus, Jesus Army, which the two of them were promoting for vulnerable people to go to. Now, as you can see, and I've said in a previous video, the Jesus Army were being investigated for years about allegations of child sex abuse and exploitation, which John Wedger would have known about because he would have been working in the mess at that time. Now, Chris Lambriano, you could say the poor old dear didn't know what was going on. He didn't read the papers. He didn't hear it in the news because it was reports on them being investigated. But John Wedger has no excuse. He would have fully known. Now, I want you to look at this video. And it starts off with the Sean Atwood podcast, which was only filmed a few weeks ago. And this is well after the um, the Jesus Army had to be closed down because of child sex abuse and exploitation so it was well known then and again Chris Lambriano mentions them in positive terms and John Wedger actually laughs now this man's supposed to be fighting and concerned about these poor children who have been sexually exploited but then we'll go back further to an interview John did with Chris Lambriano a year previously and just let's look at John's body language which I'm telling you reveals that he was fully aware of what was going on at the uh, Jesus Army and decided to keep Stoma Bansi for self interest. It was while during two interviews featuring John and Chris during a podcast where Chris speaks about a young girl that they picked up and took to the Christian Army Church. John lets out a nervous laugh as though he knows what behaviour and action was carried out at the Christian Army Church. The second interview is where Chris speaks about the Christian Army Church and John is seen touching his face and lips. 
Now to many who have a basic knowledge and understanding of body language, we understand that touching the face is a self-soothing action when thinking of something stressful or unpleasant. While touching the lips and the mouth are a clear indication of wanting to speak and say something, while using the hand or fingers as a guard against speaking out. Chris Lambriano is better known as the right hand man of the craze and is even to have said to have disposed of people for the craze. With regards to John Wedger, one has to ask themselves for what purpose and reason did John join the Christian Army Church in the first place? Went to the hospital, John Radcliffe, where she was, and I picked her up from there and I took her to the Jesus Army on the Jesus Army have a meeting, a big gathering, um, and I went along to that. <laughs> and what was an ex-Metropolitan Police officer doing rubbing shoulders with the likes of a street-level undertaker? For myself, I still stand by my words that those who go out on a limb or out of their way to try and promote protecting children and their safety, either through charities or helplines, are usually the most sinister predators, who normally have an ulterior motive regarding children. You only need to look up the founder of Childline with Esther Ranson's Crime Watch's Nick Ross. Go and have a look at what he said regarding watching child material. It's vile. Now many could argue this is all simply innocent and that John Wedger is just trying to do his best by the protection of children. But when there's so many mitigating circumstances, such as the company that John keeps, a church that has been then found to be resulting in the abuse of children, it is very hard to comprehend and understand that John was totally unaware and oblivious to the background, surroundings and what was going on in front of his eyes. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you think John Wedger was fully aware of what was going on? Or did you think he just turned a blind eye? And uh, let's continue. Well, let's hope there's more of this, Chris, eh? <laughs> and God bless everyone. God bless. I hope you enjoyed the video and the content. If you haven't already, be sure to smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date with future videos. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to smash the like button too. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.